after almost getting burnt out over the last season and a half of admittedly mixed quality, this serial gives me hope. It begins with the Time Lords temporarily reactivating the Doctor's TARDIS so that he can help recover some stolen files from the Master. Does that mean we're about to get our first taste of the Third Doctor in a more traditional classic Doctor Who sci-fi setting? You betcha! I'm so excited! Let's go! It is so refreshing to get a taste of that old familiar formula. When I realised we were getting a traditional TARDIS adventure, I literally had a huge smile on my face. And yo, kicking things off with the Third Doctor's TARDIS interior reveal. Finally! We even get that traditional, it's bigger on the inside, reaction from Joe. Wait, are those walls painted? Ew. No time to complain about less than impressive wall circles though, because we have a brilliant six-part serial from 1971 in The Colony in Space. Which, I don't have the DVD, so it's, you know, season 8 box set on Blu-ray. Hearing the name Colony in Space, I thought it would be like a literal space station. Kind of like, oh, I don't know, the wheel in space. But no, it's an alien planet. Yes, a real planet with real aliens and real stakes and real conflict and oh, where have you been over the last six serials? But it's not all same old, same old. For instance, Joe actually has a more apprehensive response to the whole ordeal. A first for a classic companion, I think. Normally it's, righto, new alien world. Just take it in your stride, or, huh, time travel? Aliens? You're crazy, dog. Oh my gosh, is that a big creme? But Joe freaks out like, nope, nope, we are not doing this today. I just put the kettle on. Take me home now, Doctor. Poor Briggs is stuck back on Earth like, ah, oh, crap. He actually fixed his TARDIS. Well, who else am I going to argue unnecessarily with now? Alrighty, so where have the Time Lords led the Doctor? Some alien planet in the year 2472, where there's a colony of colonists and a colony of evil corporate miners. I bet you'll never guess who the villains of the story are. And they both want claim to the planet. There's also these guys, these guys, that thing, and Big Lizard. And in another probably unintentional nod to early 60s Doctor Who, the TARDIS immediately gets stolen by the creatures. You'd think he'd learn to pin it down like a tent or something. So, the Doctor and Joe are caught between two competing factions, and there's aliens, and action, and compelling characters, and great writing, and yes, yes to this, please fix your TARDIS properly, Doctor, so we can get back to the fun stuff. Not to say that Exile on Earth can't be fun at times, but come on, this is just awesome, I mean... Look at the third Doctor using his goofy Venusian karate moves. Alright, here's where it crossed over from a good fun time into genuinely great storytelling. I was so engaged with the, the plot and how it was all unfolding that I actually forgot the original setup, like what initially started all of this. That is, until about the halfway point where a new character is introduced with his face partially obscured. I'm like, oh shoot, that's the master! Tying it all back into the beginning. From here on out, it's just so friggin' good. I love it. I really do. Maybe on its own, Colony in Space isn't that special, but I gotta tell ya, after making three Road to Concert vlogs, several Doctor Who reviews over the span of a couple of weeks, while also planning on moving and not enjoying the Claws of Axos very much, this was just so rejuvenating. I guess this means I'm ready for next week's crap. Oh, okay, so final noteworthy things to mention because I don't want to give away how the story ends even though it's, you know, not that hard to guess. I mean, it is Doctor Who after all. Okay, so we've got the third Doctor's sonic screwdriver making its first appearance in a while. An alien does the whole transmigration of object thing where he's holding something and then it just disappears. Or walks out of the camera frame. I know it's not the same, but I refuse to let that one throwaway line from an earlier episode go. The Master's got himself a little fob watch thing, which acts as like a TARDIS security camera, but the fob watch is like an important thing in the Time Lord lore that we know from the modern series, so I thought that was a pretty neat touch. Uh, this isn't a negative, but if you're paying attention and you notice it, it can be a little distracting. So the story is set in the year 2472, and yet the colonists and the miners are all using like World War II weapons. 
or whatever historical era, I don't really care. I recognise them from Call of Duty, and so they, they're not very, you know, 2472-esque. And lucky last, this is a super packed cast. You've got an actor in a pretty major role who went on to become a very prominent anti-censorship advocate. You've got Roy Skelton, who at the time was the voice of the Daleks, playing the scumbag Norton. And then the biggest surprise for me, who's this woman? She looks so familiar. Oh my goodness! It's only ruddy Gail Platt from Coronation Street. Yeah, I watch Cory from time to time. And that is Colony in Space. Honestly, I thought this was going to be like my longest review in ages because I just had so many notes and things I wanted to say about it, but it kind of just all wove together nicely into a nice, short, neat package. Cool. The end. Thank you for watching. Oh, I'm feeling happy for the first time in a while. Just a good, good feeling, you know? Natural serotonin and all that. Which I'm sure won't last because I already know I'm going to hate next week's cereal, so feel free to skip that one. But as always, thanks for watching. You're incredible. Have a great day. Bye.